All right, welcome back to Grand Tactician, the Civil War, 1861 to 1865. This is uh, taken from a live stream. Hope you enjoy. Uh, all right, well, we've almost cleared Virginia. I don't, I mean, it's 1861. We're not in no position really to invade. I need to settle into winter quarters. Um, and we need to focus on getting the Army of Northern Virginia and the Army of Tennessee actually built with Corps and turned into professional forces over the winter of 61 to 62. Um, not going to try and win this thing in the first couple months. I don't think it's possible. Greg's national hero, Sickles loses face. Oh, what do we got over here? Oh. Yeah, results of battle. Um, 2,500 killed, 387 captured, so 420 were actually paroled. Captured 1,600 rifles and one cannon. Um, yeah. So heading into winter, I'm quite happy with our situation right now. I uh, just want to do a quick check to see what's available. Um, still don't think we need rear muskets, especially now that we're going after uh, European imports heavily. Um, yeah, I don't need any of this yet, so we'll be waiting for... Uh, I'm going to want cavalry reform too. I want horse artillery. Uh, even if it doesn't make a huge difference, I think it's uh, a good... It's good to have cavalry divisions. Um, and then organizational reform. This is the big one. We're one million. We got two and a half more to save up. Um, and our finances, we're investing 12.5 million a year. So it shouldn't be too long. All right. Um, with that, Army of the Potomac. Uh, you can't build yet. Damn. Alright. Army of Shenandoah, you're in an excellent position. They burned the depot. Alright. Um, that being said, let's withdraw the Army of Northwest. Actually, here. Army of the Potomac, I'm going to put you up here, and you're going to build another depot. And Army of the Potomac, you're heading to Fredericksburg, and once we get this, uh, once the Army of the Potomac's in decent shape, we'll start to uh, build a depot for Fredericksburg. We've got our Richmond depot. Uh, Oh, project supply reform. What's that? Upgrade of supply depots requires a project supply reform. Um, I missed that. Where is supply reform? Sharps. Ah, supply reform. Um, so we would almost be able to do that. Uh, so divisions began to be formed around October, historically. Core came about uh, after the Seven Days Battle, really. Uh, informally, Jackson would have been a core commander uh, in his Valley Command, uh, Valley Campaign with Ewell and Johnson as his divisional commanders. Um, Allegheny, Edmund Johnson. Um, so yeah, I think supply reform comes after. Because I would like to get these guys cored up. Um, I think it's a good idea for us to have Jackson as a core. And then move around divisions. Um, yeah, because Longstreet, D.H. Hill, Magruder, technically all were uh, 
Uji. Who else? Uh, anyway, maybe missing one or two, but they all had divisional command in the Seven Days campaign. Uh, even though they were operating independently as though they were core in a lot of regards. So the Union has taken funding one. We are 26 a days away from military two. We've already taken uh, budget policy. Let's see where we are. All right. So the Army of Tennessee under Zollicoffer has not fought well, to say the least. Uh, oh, what do we get? Hold on. Ships constructed. Uh, one ship has been constructed, the U.S. CSS New Orleans. Uh, let's take a look at our fleets then. Our frigates are done. Um, so they're going into the Savannah Squadron. Wait a minute. Is this going to be like one day more and they're all completed? Let's see. Johnson at destination. Alright. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Johnson. Hold on. Let's pause for a second. Depot. Uh, let's build a depot right there. I'm going to need a depot back here outside of Fredericksburg. This will be our Fredericksburg line. We'll hold the uh, Rappahannock here. Uh, it's our main defensive structure. Army of the Potomac is backing up the northwest. Uh, Alright, there's... I think that's the rest of our ships. So, Savannah Squadron, yeah. U.S., United States, Georgia, Huntsville, and New Orleans. Um, once those ships get into place, that's another 200, that'd be 287 guns. We can actually take on some blockading squadrons at that point, possibly. Uh, we've taken, taken more, up to... 85 million dollars in the first six, seven months of the war. Alright. Build the depots. Core guard. Come on, man. Recover. Oh, who do we got back? Uh, Colonel Hood. All right, so, uh, let's see here. The Pony Express closes, transcontinental mail service over, telegraph replaces riders. A financial failure, over 35,000 letters delivered by Pony Express. $200,000 startup cost, only $90,000 made back. Wow. Um, okay, let me find... Uh, I'm going to be looking for in Virginia um, Joe Robertson replace with John Bell Hood so I'd like to keep uh, Hood in uh, Brigade Command I'd like to keep everybody in Brigade Command until they get some experience, promote them up to Divisional Command. They prove themselves there, promote them up to uh, Corps Command. Uh, obviously, I have some favorites that are standing out. But, uh, I mean, Jackson's division has performed very well. Johnson is deserving of Army Command because he has outperformed everyone. Um, even though, well, we'll blame the first three battles that were lost on him. Uh, not me, of course. It's all Johnson's fault. But, yeah, Johnson is, is definitely a figure that, uh, as a historian, you can always go back and forth, back and forth about. For a long time, he was considered a great commander. 
Many times now he's considered a poor commander. Alright, Fayetteville Rifles. So, with that, uh, Fayetteville. I want them to go to my best brigade. So, uh, Stonewall. Fayetteville's and Richmond's. So we'll upgrade that. And then... My forces. Uh, so, Mississippi Rifle, 500 yards, 2.5 rounds a minute. Five, 500 yards, 3 rounds a minute. So we'll upgrade them. Uh, Hood, you're definitely commanding one of the better brigades. You will get Richmond Rifles. Richmond Rifle, copy the Springfield, two and a half rounds a minute, 450 yards. Not as good as the Fayettes, but still a pretty good little little uh, weapon. Richard D. Anderson, um, you're really close to being the Divisional Commander. But yeah, we'll give you Fayetteville's uh, Stephen D. Lee. Mississippi Rifles, your small enough unit. D.H. Hill, Fayetteville's, Richard Ewell. You can also take some Fayetteville's. Um, so this is actually freeing up a lot of weapons for our other forces. Uh, let's see here. A.P. Hill, you will also get, you'll get the last of those. John B. Gordon, Mississippi's for you, sir. Robert Ransom. I'm actually going to base this more off of the commander. Uh, and then, Mr. Jones Pickett. Uh, so the Rens is 400 yards, 3 rounds a minute. So the Richmond fires further. Uh, yeah, I don't think I need to replace them. Uh, let me see. Anybody have the Augustines in the Eastern Front? Uh, let's, where's Army of Northwest? Yeah, Augustines are there. 350 and 3 rounds. Those we can definitely replace. So we'll use some uh, Lorenzes and Richmonds. Richmond's a little slower to read, uh, same speed to reload as the Augustine, but uh, an extra hundred yards of range. I'll take every day of the week. Um, all right, Army of West Tennessee, Patrick Flayburn, Richmond Rifles. And actually, yeah, let's go ahead and rename this to the Yell. Brigade was, or at least his regiment was known. Waddle, Springfield. Let's see what everybody else has. Uh, just want to make sure nobody has, um, and they shouldn't at this point in the campaign. Uh, Western Army. Probably recruit some more men into the Western Army. There. Um, just to double check. Plains rifle, I'm okay with. Lorenzis, alright. So those came in. Let's go ahead. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Let's actually do another 10,000 there. We'll slow up on the Richmonds. The Richmonds are not as important. Fayetteville's very important. Uh, Alright, for regards, you can now build a depot. That's going to be a very important depot to hold. 
All right, convention held in London, Mexico under threat of an invasion, British, Spanish, French to send troops, Napoleon III to conquer Mexico, a military adventure for free trade. Napoleon III, oh, how you wish to be your great uncle. Let's do a quick check, see if anything else. Nothing. Well, I do want cavalry carbines, or at least the medium range carbines, maybe not those. And then I'm interested in the Williams gun. Very interested in that. Not saying we have to get it, but I'm interested. All right, we're in winter quarters across Virginia. I'm assuming, yep, yeah, we're in winter quarters. Johnson, you have a depot, so you're, you should be good. 32,000, you're right at 32,000. Okay. So you should be good for winter. You're a major general, at least. Provisionally pres provisional president officially elected. Jefferson Davis for six years. Davis and Stevens without opposition. 55 votes needed. 109 secured. No possibility of re-election. Oh yes, that's right. Uh, Confederate presidents serve six year instead of four year terms, but we're limited to one term. So Jefferson Davis was not allowed to be president for past uh, what would be 1867. One, North Carolina is 95. All right, U.S. passes tariff act. Tariff rates rising. European traders shocked. 54% Kentucky, 93% Tennessee, Alabama's Mississippi, 100%, Arkansas, 90 Missouri, 60 Okay, so we're actually getting decent support. 20% over here, 18 in Ohio, Maryland's 39 Pennsylvania. Delaware's 39, Jersey's 20, Pennsylvania's 15. Uh, kind of curious. Oh, militia, or military policy to enact the Confederacy strengthens its military. More money to the military, citizens fear forced conscription. Uh, well, historically, yeah, this is not far off of when the Confederacy did. Uh, form uh, or start construction. Um, let's see, the CS Army is receiving more support from the politicians. Recent decisions have made further military funding available. This funding can be used to establish new recruiting offices across the states and to increase internal security. The funding of private contractors allows the strengthening of blockades as well as securing the flow of trade in the event of enemy blockades, which we would be under. As the size of the military increases, reorganization is required to make armies more flexible in their operations. A core organization is introduced. Corps are capable of independent operations as they have their own logis logistical support. Grand armies like those of Napoleon can now be formed from the volunteer soldiers. As armies grow, new volunteers are harder to find. The introduction of conscription or bounties paid to volunteers may be possible solutions. The pool of available soldiers to fight for independence needs to be increased. That is true. Um, Alright, let's take a look at things real quick. Um, so the morale of armies is still very similar. National support is still very similar. National morale, we definitely have a, a major advantage. Um, I do kind of have to wonder why Beauregard is still General-in-Chief. Considering Albert Sidney Johnson and Joseph E. Johnston both outrank him now. Uh, men fielded, we have 115 in the field, they have 170,000, so we're outnumbered by 55,000 troops, which is not bad. Uh, four battles lost, 12 won. Um, three of those battles lost came in the first 
couple months of the war, May, June of 61. Uh, European relations to zero were not going for European intervention at all. Alright, so that being said, $25 million a year going into the military. Uh, I would very much like to go ahead and get the cons conscription act. Um, yeah, volunteer contracts lengthened to three years, they already are. Well, manpower base will be greatly increased with the. Wait a minute. Existing volunteer contracts are lengthened to three years. So would I even need the Militia Act 3? Interesting. I wonder if you could go instead, because this... What if you just go Military 2 and then Constrict Conscription Act 1 and skip these two? Interesting. Um, I don't think we have the economy for recruitment bounties. Yeah, 25% increase in volunteers, no, minus 5 morale, no. National morale minus 2, we can definitely afford that. Speed of replacements 50%, and we get conscriptions. We're at 8 minus, um, so I think our plan of attack is Conscription Act, and then we head to uh, Impressment. Um, let's see, number of available recruits makes... Okay. Logically, then, impressment would come before conscription. So let's do that. Um, I hope we don't have to wait all winter for another... Let's see here. Enemy blockade. Where are the enemy fleets at? Trent Affair, yeah. Okay, so... Oh, so it's actually just Fort Monroe that is, are blockading these ports. I thought I sent you guys back. No. I sent you guys back to port. And flying flotillas up here, but we have to get past Fort Monroe. They have 314 guns. Um, we have 287. Oh! Uh, let's see here. Army of the Ohio. So they did continue to march south through Kentucky. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be the Paraville map again. We have about a 2 to 1 advantage in manpower. Uh, Battle of Munfordville, Kentucky. So, initial skirmishing is done, which I guess never causes casualties. Um, 32,000 men under Albert Sidney Johnson, who is not dead yet. He's got another couple months to live. Let's see, the Union's going to have, I think it was 16,000? Yep, 16,000 under Major General Stanford. They're quite free with their promotions up there in the north. Um, yeah, this should be a fairly easy victory. Once again, this is one where we're probably going to have advantage in weapons, uh, thanks to the Lorenzes arriving. Um, Bayville's and Richmond's, yeah. We're doing actually really well with uh, munitions at this point to a field at 100,000, over 100,000 troops. Uh, oh, different battlefield than I was expecting. All right, so the Army of West Tennessee. Um, the Union's going to come down through here, so we got to imagine the old coach trail. Um, yeah, I kind of have to assume. That being said, do I split a division off? to cover Garner's Ford and Old Town Road. Or actually, yeah, John Hunt Morgan. And 
who's in command of Forest Brigade now? John Adams. Yeah, let's have you guys there. Um, Withers, you're going to command here. Bragg, you're the center of, well, okay. That's, yeah, that's centered. Donaldson, you've got them coming from here. Spread out the artillery. Some there. Some more there. And yeah, let's go ahead and get some up here. Uh, Bragg, actually, yeah. Um, the only, actually, no. Let's build. Can I? I can't switch it after. All right. Parapets. There we go. Let's build those and then upgrade. Upgrade, upgrade, that's as far as we can upgrade. All right, so that should definitely slow the yank down. Let's go ahead and dismount and get our cavalry in position. Um, actually, I want you more over here. And yeah, you're fine there. All right, so our main force is going to be over here. Anchored by Bragg in the center. There is new divisional command. Jones it Withers on our right, and Daniel Donaldson on our left. Cavalry positioned to cover this little crossing. It's actually, I've never built parapets to the highest degree they can. So we've got adipuses. Looks like we've got, uh, I don't even, uh, brush. I guess this is an early barbed wire type form. Um, which with the Springfield Musketoons, we can just barely reach. And actually, this is an assaultable position fairly easily because of the fence line over here. But we'll see if they come that way. I still think they're going to cross here or here. Um, if they cross over here, there's no real way for me to reinforce other than either coming in over Miller's Ford, speed this up and get, uh, get engaged, Mueller's Ford and coming at them from the rear and attacking or all the way down here coming up. So yeah, if they go after my cavalry, I think the best plan of attack is actually to swing around their rear and attack them. Seven thirty in the morning. We wait. All right. Um, which hell I could actually put? Really? <laughs> Shows you how much I know. All right, brag. Donaldson, Withers, full assault, Polk, I know, Polk, get over here, McCowan, face that way, um, Sheffield, get over here, we'll support, artillery support from the other side, they're just straight up flanking, they don't even care. They're sitting just outside of artillery range. Okay. Oh, from this side of the bank. Oh, those, those are six pounder guns. Uh, yeah, Bragg, please just get the hell up there. Move faster than you ever did in real life. This in spades. Vance, Donaldson, let's get you long range. And I 
range. So where there's long range, you get up here. Alright, the artillery is starting to open up. We're gonna crush these forces. It's just so surprising. Where's the rest of his army? Alright, Johnson, actually, what, um, pull back over here. I don't... I'm not understanding the problem right here. Um, yeah, let's advance and start to keep fire keep the fire up, boys. Patrick, get involved. Experience. Um, where the for the flippin' flock? All right, Donaldson, you're now marching down here. Um, Morgan, if you can mount up, I want to see. I need eyes. Adams, mount up. Get down here with Morgan. Um, Clayburn, rob that guy. Brag, give me Brag. There we go. Route. Um, start moving artillery. Sheffield, over here. Canty, yep. All right. Uh, now Bragg, let's get you over here. Withers, I want you here. Okay, they're actually coming up now. Um, so let's get the artillery more over here. Let's see. Uh, did I miss one? Where's Polk? Albert, get your ass over here. I need you actually issuing commands. Oh, no. All right, Morgan and Adams, please retake the objective. Let's see. Yeah, they're... Damn it. That cavalry's going to charge right in. Donaldson may actually... Okay. Donaldson may get there. Fire. Come on, boys. All right. Let's get everybody in action here. Oh. So he distracted me, and then. Come on, Pond. Bait! Come on now, guys. You know you completely overwhelm these on this force. Like, there is no reason that you should be panicking. Alright, 
What do we got? What do we got? Morgan, what? Morgan and Adams? All right, fine. All right, Bragg, there. Donaldson, there. Uh, Withers, there. Let's go. All right, uh, they're going to keep falling back, but you're... All right, um, while we're waiting, you guys start firing on these assholes. Enemies retreating. Good. That one caught me a little off guard, but this is going to be a resounding victory. Three brigades. If they want to fight, we'll give them a fight. What we got? Claiborne, you are not going to rout. I just gave you command, and you are too good of a commander. I know this is your first engagement, I know you're winded. Alright. That was a good battle. Um, Alright, with that, uh, that's our third battle of the stream. So, it's time to take a break and verify the game files. So, as soon as we uh, get back in the, the uh, main screen, we'll end the stream here, and we'll go from there. Um... Withers is famous. I don't I don't understand that. He did nothing. In fact, he left half his division guarding entrenchments which are no longer being used. When I ordered his entire division south. Oh well. Almost there. Um, so with that battle, Colonel Ferry loses face. We paroled 500 troops, captured 1,700 rifles and five cannon. Um, do a quick check to see if there's anything. Getting closer. Two six. So we've got about a million left to save up for core. Get core and then we'll get supply reform. Um, yeah, nothing over here yet, so we're good there. Alright, guys, um, that's been Grand Tactician American Civil War. Um, this is episode four, and we'll leave it there. We're in control of Virginia, Arkansas, and parts of Kentucky. There's a filter for that. Front lines. Yes, we, we actually hold parts of Ohio somehow. Never mind. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of thing. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.